Good day, I am Armin Rose Concepcion and this is my submission on Curriculum Development for SSE 290, Research in Social Studies Education. My analysis will be on the paper called Curriculum-Based Theater Program and Self-Reported Empathy by Samantha Raimondi. This paper is a dissertation for the degree in Doctor of Philosophy from the Graduate School of Education of Fordham University. The paper aims to study the relationship between curriculum-based theater program and the development of empathy among students. It was conducted in a U.S. high school with a special theater program. A student enrolled in the program must take subjects in theater from freshman year to senior year in addition to the general high school curriculum. The research used a mixed methods approach wherein quantitative data from a survey is supplemented with qualitative anecdotes from interviews. The results indicated that there is a significant positive relationship between being enrolled in a curriculum-based theater program and the self-reported empathy of the students. According to the data, there was a significant difference in self-reported empathy between the theater and non-theater students and the freshman students and senior students of theater studies. Implications for current practice and recommendations for future research was presented. Now, there was no theoretical framework explicitly stated in the paper. It claimed that empathy can be taught and learned and adolescence is a period wherein the greatest development of this trait takes place. It cited previous research that claimed that empathy can be taught best using the arts, particularly theater and acting. The situated learning theory by Jean Lave and Etienne Wenger from 1991 would support this hypothesis. The theory states that learning happens through a legitimate peripheral participation in a community of practice. So learning is usually unintentional, but is brought about by being exposed to a group with shared skills and interests, engaging in activities together, and sustaining these interactions over time. By enrolling in the theater program, the students become members of a community of practice. And while they did not go through the program to learn to be more empathetic, they eventually develop this trait by learning communication skills body language, improvisation, monologuing, role-playing, and other acting techniques taught in a curriculum-based theater program. Anecdotes of these were stated by the students during the structured interviews. There are two research problems and hypotheses presented in the paper. The, per, the first hypothesis states that there is a significant positive relationship between self-reported effective empathy and enrollment in curriculum-based theater classes. And the second hypothesis states that there is a significant positive relationship between self-reported cognitive empathy and enrollment in curriculum-based classes. In the conceptual framework, you can see that curriculum-based theater program with its peer interaction, skills training, and coursework leads to an increase in empathy described as cognitive empathy and affective empathy. This increase in empathy eventually leads to long-term effects of improved social skills, interpersonal relations, emotional experiences, positive attitude, pro-social behavior, and morality. The link to the reference table for two frameworks can be found in the paper link below this video. Now, the first hypothesis was conclusively proven by the quantitative data, and the second hypothesis was not conclusively proven by the quantitative data, but the anecdotes collected from the qualitative structured interviews gave indication of support. Therefore, uh, there is still proof of it being there. This leads the researcher to suggest that utilization and support for theater instruction in high schools because of its empirically supported benefits 
and the overall positive effect on its students. The paper comment, recommends further studies on a larger scale with more diverse populations and for longer time periods for the evidence to be generalizable. The references for this paper came from instructionaldesign.org, semanticscholar.org, and proquest.com. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day.